What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through today's baseball slate. And uh, yeah, Sheets, you know, we'll talk about the weekend. We'll talk about everything you guys got into. I, I, I did I did say very boldly when Rody White and I were on, on Friday, I thought that I was it was my time to win. And last time I said it, it worked. Um, it didn't work for me this time. It, my, my lucky 22 number came up everywhere. I was 22nd in every tournament, every almost... I, at one point, it looked like I was going to win the $15, which would have been cool to win that, you know, the the, the giant lottery one, because that one's been a while. I ended up making some money, but nothing significant and ready for something big for baseball. So tell us about your weekend. I know you had a nice and nice golf results. You're obviously healthy, which is the most important thing. But talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the slate. Yeah, I had a nasty stomach virus that ruined my whole weekend. Uh, but from from the was, I had plans, and they got smashed because of that. It was the, you know, all of our immune systems are so screwed because we haven't been outside and, and get, catching anything. Yep. So everything that you get, you just get. It's so annoying. Anyway, um, DFS-wise, the only thing I did well, I, I, I played that stupid team thing. The one thing I didn't, like, really run any projections for, and I just kind of won it. As you predicted, predicted, well, you're probably going to win that. Yep. I literally had a lead. I remember that lead that you had, like, that 100,000 know, NBA once where you like, literally had no chance to lose. Right. Like, like this, was, this was the equivalent of that. I literally had no chance to lose. I was the only person in the top 100, and it was, like, only like 300 people in it that were six for six, and I was 50 points ahead going into Sunday. It was, like, literally no chance to lose. And it, was, and it, was the, and it was, wasn't even the, uh, the alternating – it wasn't even the best ball where people could make up a lot of ground. It was, like, alternate shots where no one could make up any ground. Right. And somehow they did. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely oh, amazing. God. So I got second at the end by like two points. I'm still like 6,000, which certainly can use considering how baseball's going, but I, I'm, I'm going to shake it up. So, so you, so you, you call the 422. What I'm doing, if you haven't noticed, I'm going to shake it up today and we're going to, we're going to just, we're going to have the non true DFS background for me for just one day. Okay. And we'll see if maybe that kind of tempts the baseball gods a little. Maybe, and it doesn't maybe. matter because once I share my screen, my face is probably disappearing anyway. No, no your um, face will be up there. It's mine that goes, it goes away. Oh, is that true? Yeah, it's been happening lately. I don't know what's going on with Zoom. I've reset I all the rules. We can't do that. We have to have your face. We have, to have, the, we have to have the better, have to have the better looking guy up there. Get one, out of our, here. one of us is going to be up <laughs> there. That's for sure. So. No, for some reason, we, it just keeps happening. But we're, well, we're going to get it fixed. It's just a weird issue for some reason. It's not showing my face, but it should show yours. But uh, all right, so no better take. So we got the no, the no uh, true DFS background today. And uh, I need to, I will start load mine and, and put it up there in case my face ever does get shown uh, shortly. But today I'm, I'm going no, no background with you and I'm on the road. As you know, I'm moving. Everybody knows out there. And I also had a bunch of stuff cut off my face. So it's bear with me. Please don't, uh, don't troll me again. It we're not getting, we're not getting the hashtag headshot for a while. Huh? Yeah, okay. no, I already, I know. Seriously. I had to actually, I did, did them right before. I did a couple of them right before. Anyway. All right, let's get into the slate. Uh, let's talk through uh, uh, some, you know, look, it's a small slate. I share my screen. Manageable, which is nice. Um, so let's Okay, go. wait. First, a little public service announcement. You know, don't forget, everybody, it's a 610 start time. 610. So that, um, for, for, for FanDuel people, it's 710 uh, for the main, but then you could, uh, but 610. So um, we'll probably, I'll probably, uh, you know, I guess we'll go live at some point. Like I think 530 should make sense, right? At five, 530 is fine by me. Yeah, that should, that should work because that gives us enough time to go over. And then people usually are on to the other stuff. They want to talk NBA these days. At okay. the end of, oh, there's still three games a day or whatever. Okay. So, so right out of the gate at 610, we got Corbin Burns at 10-2 in Cy Young form. Probably, you know, the what, <laughs> One of the one of the top attempt at this is I don't have the confidence right now. One of the top plays on the slate, <laughs> um, but I would say between him, I would rate the top guys. And we'll get, I, I guess we could do this. I would rate Burns and and Scherz are really close given the price, mm -hmm. and I have a little bit of a drop to 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 Bieber. Um, but so right now I, I do have Burns as kind of a top play, um, and. Don't have any interest in San Francisco. And then on the hitting side, um, I, I have Milwaukee as one of the top stacks for me, but it's not as if they're a huge standout. I have, I have like one, two, three. I have like five. I have like I have a lot of teams I can play, even though it's a seven seven game slate. But I definitely have Milwaukee up there. So for me, six ten, Burns get off to a nice start, maybe you know, and then maybe maybe get some Milwaukee getting some stuff on the board. I don't know. Let's, let's start, let's start off with a nice, easy analysis. 
Yeah, I don't, um, I, I like Burns a lot. <clears throat> Obviously, I think it's, he'll be the, you know, I think he'll end up being probably the most popular, but right there with, with the other two. Um, I, I think that this is, I'm not overwhelmingly in love with this Milwaukee team. <clears throat> I know they've had a couple of, a couple of good days. It just doesn't feel all that exciting. Um, honestly, like the bats that you do want to kind of use, we've had the one, you know, we finally got Renfro to actually hit the ball over the weekend or over the last five days because he had not done anything at all. Um, but Renfro, McCutcheon, and Adamas would be my favorites here. And, and it's just, I just don't feel overwhelmingly excited. If it's a stack, it's going to be a mini stack for me. Mm -hmm. um, but you, I don't think they'll be overly popular. So I'm, I'm still, you know, reserving my right to change my mind because I do think that if they end up totally unowned, I could, I could maybe make an argument to take some of the shots there. But uh, as of right now, I don't plan to. Uh, Philadelphia, Colorado for you. What are your thoughts here? So if there's one guy, somebody's playing, who's not the, the spend up, it's, it's Gibson, right? Right. So the question I have about, uh, about Gibson is the same question I'm going to have about Barrios when we get to him. Um, and it's something that you kind of just your 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 voice is always in my head about this stuff is that if you play those guys, why are you playing? You know, like like what what does playing those guys get you? Um, what on the hitting side does that afford you that you can't just get anyway by playing, say, Burns and Scherzer together or something like that? Um, and th that's that. I think that's a very legitimate question on on today's slate because I I don't think that any hitting environment is, 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 is such a smash environment that you actually have to pay down for, for, for pitching. Um, but I will say that if you do want to pay down for pitching, I mean, both, both Gibson and Barrios, we'll get to him, right. Are both, are both very, very strong prices. Um, you have Colorado on the road and they they usually are not very good on the road. And, and Gibson has, as listen, he's, uh, I've been on actually on the right side of the Gibson, uh, the Gibson uh, play. I mean, a few times that I have played him, um, he's, he's performed for me. Um, so if I do want to pay up for hitting somehow, I, I certainly have no problem with playing him. I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to do that, but between him and Barrios, I wonder who is going to be the most popular. We, I guess we could talk about that, but, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and on the hitting side, I think that, um, I think that Philly is probably going to take money. Um, but I don't know. They're just another team for me. I mean, I got, I got, a, I got a bunch of teams I can play today and it, Philly somehow be, ends up being high owned. I mean, I'm sure they will be. Um, I, I don't know if I have to play them. I mean, Freeland, listen, Freeland's, listen, we had this argument, not argument, this discussion when I was talking about Marquis, you know, in Colorado. I'm like, I'm sure he's their best pitcher. And you're like, well, actually, Freeland's probably, Freeland's the opening day starter. He's probably their best pitcher. And well, I think Marquis probably is, but yeah, but I, but you're right. He, Freeland was. But the, the, the point is, is that, the, but the guy, listen, these guys that, 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 that freaking survive in Colorado, I mean, they're, that's, that's, that's rough business, man. You know, and so I wouldn't go out of my way to freaking just 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 attack these pitchers when you know what I mean. So so I don't know. I think Philly's fine. Uh, some a couple of guys are cheap. I think Baum is cheap. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I don't have to play Philly. I mean, but they're certainly one of the teams I'm looking at. So for me, Gibson, if I choose to pay up for hitting, and uh, uh, Philly certainly in play. Yeah, so I, 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 my counter to you with Gibson is, well, he has the same ceiling as all the other st ices do, and he's 6,800. Um, he's already had a bigger game than I think any of these guys have had all season long. I think he had 36 or what did he, did he have, 35 in a game against the A's. Um, yeah, it was the A's, but this is Colorado. And he actually was really, he was good against them in Colorado. He just didn't have the strikeouts. Um, same thing with Freeland. Freeland had only gave up two runs against this, against this Philly team in, in, Philadelphia, in Colorado. So I don't know why all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, that means we have to stack them in Philly. It is good hitting weather for what it's worth. The wind's blowing out to left. But if they end up too popular, I just completely agree. I don't think this is something I need to do, uh, play the Philly side of it. And I like Gibson. Um, I do. I, I think that he's he's viable. The, the, the other, the, the, you know, the, there is the, that we do have the ceiling guys on this slate. Like we've been talking, you know, about the, the, the ace pitchers and everything and how we haven't been seeing all this stuff. Well, if you're going to talk about the guys who are real aces, like, I mean, Corbin Burns is the guy who can put up the 35s. You know, Shane Bieber can, Max Scherzer can. And uh, even Bueller at 8,800 is like reasonable. You've even got Fram, uh, like guys like Valdez. These are, there's a lot of good pitching on this slate. So I am going to, uh, to have Gibson in the mix. I don't know where he's going to end up for me, but I am probably more inclined to fade Philadelphia than most people are because 
I just think that, uh, I just don't think it's as good of a spot as everybody thinks, as everybody else does. Not to say this couldn't be the night they go off. They have a powerful offense. I think, you know, Castellanos, Hoskins, Real Muto especially stand out, but I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm going to play it if they uh, can, if they look, if they are as chalky as they look. Now, if they change their lineup and somebody ends up in a funky spot and it means they're going to be low owned, that I might get involved with. Or if I was going to make a full stack, I would make sure to include Kyle Schwarber because he'll be forgotten about. And I don't think Harper is going to be overly popular either. So I, I think that's what I would do is try and include at least one of those two big spend up lefties. Um, but I'm not going to do it probably. All right, Toronto and uh, Boston. I, I, I'll just say that right off the bat, I, I don't, <laughs> I understand we've seen the good and the bad in Barrios. I mean, his strike, his K prop is, is, you know, it's not much below the top guys. And, and, he did just put up 21 against these guys the other day, and they decided to drop his price to 5,500 on DraftKings. Not really sure why. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Again, what are we getting if we do it? Yeah, the ceiling feels a little bit capped against a good Boston team. Um, doesn't feel like he's going to put up like a 30 here very often. But 5,500, I mean, there is a part of me that's just sort of going, wow, it's kind of tempting to play those two guys together. And I don't think I would stack Toronto, but I have no problem getting like a little mini stack, especially starting with Vlad and Springer um, and then mixing in maybe a Chapman or something like that, maybe a Bichette. I think that this is a reasonable like mini stack to take against Evaldi here. Um, the last time against, the, against these guys, I, it didn't uh, work out like incredibly well, but they did hit him really hard. Like they actually, you could argue that they even got unlucky. I mean, they had, they had seven hits and four and two thirds. Um, they have the one home run. I, I think this is a spot where I wouldn't mind a little mini stack against Evaldi at low ownership. But other than that, um, I, I'm still just up in the air with what I'm going to do with Barrios. I'm probably going to end up fading him um, just because I, I like when I when I when I looked at the prices here before I even kind of ran this stuff, I, I was expecting to see Barrios like just clearly the top value on the slate. Um, as just point per dollar goes, hmm. because I mean, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand what a guy has to do either. I mean, like he literally just, <laughs> just lights out the last game in the exact same matchup in mm -hmm. 5,500. I, I thought Barrios had, you know, friends at DraftKings said, listen, I want the entire world to play me in his, my next start. So could you please like, like make me like less than 7K? Well, I'll do even better now. I'll make you 5,500. And just a perfect time for him to bust. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I, I would be careful, you know, a, Listen, this game was just a week ago. Giving, giving, giving a decent lineup, maybe another shot at you. You know what I mean, like that. Um, at, at chalk, I will say that JD Martinez. I see him day to day. I don't know if he's going to play. Um, if he's out, I guess that has to make Boston's lineup worse. Um, so I don't know how, how much you want to consider that. I, I don't think he'll play today, for what it's worth. But I'm oh, okay. Um, and then on the, I'm not playing. I'm not playing against well Toronto. I'm just not no. Gonna. I mean, listen, he throws it 100. I'm sure he can get, get his strikeouts. And if he gets lucky and Toronto just misses bats, I'm sure I'm, he, could have a, he could have a big game. But I, I'd, rather, I'd rather play tomorrow. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you, do you like – I mean, gun to your head. I mean, do you like Barrios better than Gibson? No. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I do think the, the matchup with Boston is just a little bit tougher. But I do like – I mean – I mean, I, I, as I was an overall pitcher, probably, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, tonight on the slate. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I think they're both very strong. I actually think they're both really in play. I think they're both going to be, I mean, now maybe, that I'm thinking, maybe they're both going to be about 25 30%. Maybe, but, like, I, I do think people are going to play these. I mean, it's Scherzer. If, they can't play everybody, but, it, I mean, Scherzer and Burns – the clearest way to just try and try and nut the position to me. Yeah. I don't, I don't see any other, any real doubt about that. Um, there's just a lot of really good pitching options on this slate. And speaking of which we're talking about that one now. So it, it, this game has a really low total and, and, and I'm just going to double check, you know, it's early in the day. So we're seeing the weather. It's only 56 degrees. Maybe that's partly why, I mean, you do have Scherzer on the mound, but but I'm a little surprised that Mets total is is all the, is, is well below four. I've always been on the Mikolas is a, a a better pitcher than everybody gives him credit for, and I really believe this. Like he's 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 been like he's just good. He doesn't walk anybody. Um, but I, I have some interest in a, an unowned Mets stack a little bit. But uh, 
again, I don't think it's going to be a priority. Like you said earlier, there's not a whole lot of spots that jump out to you from a, you know, oh, we need to stack this team standpoint. So I'm very high on Scherzer. We've named my four favorite pitchers in the first four games. So I, uh, it's that, and then maybe some Mets, either one-offs or a mini stack of the Mets. Uh, just because I, I like Michelos, but he does pitch to contact. And I think you can, you know, you can, you can, if you can get, you know, the guy pitching to contact for guys who tend to struggle with strikeouts like Alonzo. And I just think all of these guys are going to be low owned. So I, I will take some shots with the Mets as one off, maybe a couple of, maybe a two man, but not, not overly excited about any of the hitting in this game. Um, I might do actually a little research on this one because I remember, and again, this is, this is, this is sheets world. You know, when I'm, I'm like trying to listen to one thing, there's seven other things going on. I'm trying to do thing that's over here and there's another thing on the monitor, but I remember somewhere in, in, in one year, something else was, 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 was playing the other year. One of the last times there was some strikeout pitcher going against the Cardinals. They said, you know, the Cardinals are, don't really strike out all that much. Um, I don't know if that's true, whether I hallucinated. Maybe it was some idiot just making some comment to justify fading some pitcher. Um, but I want to look into that. Um, it doesn't really matter with Scherzer, in my opinion. But uh, that's, what I, that's, what, that's what I was going to get to. What I was going to get to, you know, the, the whole concept of, of matchup proof. You know what I mean? Of, <laughs> of if, you, if you throw it 100, you know, and if, and if, you're, and if you're feeling it, no one's hitting you, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, like Garrett Cole, you know, guys like that. And Scherz, Scherzer, then may, maybe it doesn't matter. But I figured I would just kind of throw it out there um, because, I mean, you, you could make cases against some of this. I mean, like you can look Corbin Burns is lights out, but San Francisco is no joke. I mean, like they can they can hit ball. I mean, they, they don't have to strike out 17 times. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I got Scherzer right alongside of Burns, given the price. I mean, that's it's a little uh, I don't say insulting, but whatever. I mean, like he's 9300 and, and I think you should you know put him on near the top of your list, if not at the top. So. I like like that. that. I didn't quite, I didn't quite have it in me to get to either of the Yeah. I got myself in trouble by complimenting DraftKings on the way they were changing the price, the the way they started pricing people up and stuff. But but then then they reversed back because they didn't want to price up the top pitchers, but they should treat Scherzer and Burns, especially in like a different category because the strikeout upside is so high. Anyway. Yeah. I think we're, I mean, I don't don't think it's the most exciting game. Here's a game I, I do think people will will get a little bit of, and, and I probably will be one of them, would be taking some of the Astros against uh, against Dunning and, and the uh, and the Rangers. It's just about the talent level of the offense and the fact that, look, while Dunning is fine as a pitcher, like he, he, he gives up a lot of contact, he gets wild. Um, I think this is, a, this is a, a perfectly legitimate spot to want to stack uh, the Astros. And I love this kid Pena and as, as his price hikes up, his ownership will drop down. I think he's really going to be like, he's the real deal. And you, you know, you, you just have the power upside. Also, you got him leading off now in a powerful offense, really like Pena as a one-off and I like Houston as a stack. They rate for me to be uh, second on the slate. So yeah, I got hash, I got Astros rated um, uh, given everything. I have them rated very, very slight. Number one. Um, uh wow number one huh very slight Woo-hoo. Uh, but uh that's uh anybody who knows me knows what i'm doing tonight with my main stack <laughs> that's, gonna be, that's gonna be that's my second one yeah uh and uh we'll get to we'll get to them in a moment um so uh I, i'm not getting to dunning although i will say dunning at 5200 what, but what, are we, what are we doing though? We got Barrios. It's, it's a pretty sweet pivot off of Barrios, if you want to know the truth. Um, uh, I don't but know. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, sorry to my uh, good friend from the uh, whatchamacallit the other day. The what was it? The uh, I, don't know, I don't want to say log jam, not log jam. The uh, what was the thing that we did? The um, no, the oh, the round table. Round table. Yeah. My, my friend, my friend up in the round table who had Dunning in his lineups on uh, on the Saber Sim in Seattle toasted him, I think. <laughs> Um, so now you get the they try to get the Astros. I don't know, man. 50, 5200? No, I can't get away with that. Um, I'm gonna, I don't I'll, see. I, I don't see how. I don't see how like the the slate plays out and and that works out because they talk about teams that don't strike out. I mean, right. even if he gets there, like he has to get there. The other cheap guys have to not get there. Then the big the top the guys have to not get there. I need the hit. I, I got it. Yeah, I don't know. That's just my take. But I, I, so, so I, I want I want I want to make I want to make a case. So. I think I think that I think that this next game is really just like is called is like the pivot open. Okay, I really 
I don't know what about this game really makes me want to play this. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you what it is. First of all, I think I might want to play this Lorenzo dude. Okay. Um, I, 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 I played the Astros against them. They did, they did get to him, but I don't know. I was a little, I was a little, uh, I was kind of impressed with his stuff, actually, a little couple of the at-bats. And I was kind of like kicking myself because in his first game against Miami, he was he was kind of lights out. Yeah. Um, so if you want again, why are we doing this and all this all this stuff? But if you don't want to play Gibson, but you want to pay up for hitting and you don't want to play Barrios, want to pay up for hitting, I I think it's a very legitimate pivot. I will just say that. Next thing, since since we're on the subject. There's certainly nothing wrong with playing Shane Bieber at 9,600. And, and this is a perfect example of if he strikes out four and doesn't have a great game, people are going to say, well, I see, you see, you don't play guys with, with having velocity issues like Bieber. Obviously, something's not right. But if he comes right out and puts 12 strikeouts on the board, they're like, oh, he was just, he was just getting back into shape. You know what I mean? Um, and Bieber... I don't want to get into holy war here, but Bieber could be the best of the three pitchers, like mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. um, and I, mean, I don't know. I mean, got to pitch around Trout and Otani, maybe. I don't think that Bieber's but, going to be low owned for what it's worth. You don't think so? I think. But I, but I, but I, but I hear what you're saying, but I, I just don't think he's going to end up low owned. So, so I do like I do like Bieber, um, and I, I definitely think he rates below the other guys. So unless I am going to get like a significant ownership discount, I'm not going to play him, and. I'm just kind of staring at this Cleveland stack also mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as a possibility. Uh, again, people are going to play Milwaukee. People are going to play the Dodgers. People are going to play the team I just mentioned, the Astros. Uh, people are going to play Philly. Maybe Cleveland on the seven-game slate is the low on the low on one. And they are they're capable of putting up ten balls. They they can do it. They've done it a couple um, times already. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's that's kind of a decent little pivot too. So. I think this little innocent looking game could, could be kind of important. Yeah, I agree with you on actually most of everything you said. I, I, I don't know that Bieber is going to end up being a pivot, but I do think that it's, I mean, first of all, he put up, he, he was lights out against the White Sox last time out there. The guy, the last time he had a full healthy season was the Cy Young and he was kind of ran away with it. Um, so I have no problem with, with Bieber at all. Um, but I, I, I do have him for what it's worth rated below the other guys. I think Lorenzen is, I, I think there is talent there. I think this is the exact kind of guy that we're going to want to take some shots against and we're going to take some shots on, you know what I mean? We're, we're going to want to play him. We're going to try and stack against him. So because of the nature of the slate and my, my two favorite stacks being popular, I'm probably going to look to get to some Cleveland pivot craziness. You know what I mean? I, I could see this stack being there. It's 78 degrees, the wind blowing out in, in uh, really? Anaheim. It's got, the weather's finally turned over here. Like, wow. I don't know what happened. It went from like, in the mid sixties or low sixties to all of a sudden yesterday, it was like 92 degrees. I was like, Jesus Christ. It was actually hard to go outside because it was just like such a shock. Um, I think it's another reason why I keep getting these sinus things because it's whatever anyway. Um, but I really like the idea of, of getting a, a Cleveland, at least a mini stack, but I, I could go for a full stack here. Uh, Jose Ramirez, obviously the first guy you want to plug in. If you're ever playing Cleveland, Fran Mel Reyes would be number two for me. Then you get into your Miles Straw, Stephen Kwan, or saving, you know, a catcher with guys like Lavistida, if I pronounced that right. Um, yeah, Med Rosario, all of these guys are viable. And then it just seems like every time I ever talk about Cleveland and I don't mention Owen Miller, he ends up hitting a home run. I know. <laughs> so I'll just mention Owen Miller's name just so I don't, uh, I don't curse myself. But I, I don't mind the Cleveland stack at all. They're rated well below the Dodgers in Houston for me. But because of the ownership, I'm going to have to try and change some things. So I, uh, I like the idea of going there. Now, I have to ask you going into this last game sheet. So what is your opposition to the Dodgers stack? What could what has them at number two for you? I'm guessing nothing, they're number two, right? Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing really. Just just the just just the, the price and the, the you know what I mean? Yeah, nothing, nothing really. To do. I mean, if you, look, you tell me who's going to score most fantasy points. I have a Dodger rated number one and then yeah. I have a little bit over Philly and kind of a drop. Um, but when you factor price in, I just kind of get to I just get to Houston a little bit. You want to know why? Because I get, you know why? Because I'm getting like these, like maybe Chas McCormick in some of my stacks and, you know, mm -hmm. like, and stuff like that. They just make it, they just make it cheap and you can just get to the better, 
I think you just get to the to the the, the meat of the of the of the stack a little easier than getting to the to the higher spend ups on the Dodgers. You get, yeah. you get the pitchers you want to use. That's all. I, I listen. Tell me who's going to score the most runs. Dodgers. Let's go. And yeah. and I, I will ask you this. This. I mean, listen. I I, I know Bobby. I know you a little while, and I know you like to do two things. Like you like to play the Dodgers, and you like to go against Merrill Kelly, and and you have the Dodgers against Merrill Kelly, LFG. You know, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, I don't disagree. What I think is interesting, I think a real interesting decision is whether to play Walker Bueller. Um, and I think that he's, as usual, not going to project that great. Yep. And is extremely in play. Um, I I would have no issues playing him over any of those top tier pairings just just to get just to get different and i'll tell you this if you want to play these dodgers you got i think you have to save money somewhere you know i don't know if you could really play both studs at pitcher and get what you want out of the dodgers and i think if you just do it they may make a little sneaky correlation take freaking bueller you know what i mean you play bueller instead of one of those studs and it maybe be, even gets you like one of those other higher priced dodger guys maybe that's worth it yeah, uh, I mean, just in all fairness, though, the bottom of the Dodger lineup order is all way too cheap. So I don't, I don't even think that you necessarily have to. I mean, Bellinger, Taylor, and Lux seven is eight. Justin Turner still free? I have no reason not to play them. Justin Turner's four point two. He's re- very reasonable. Um, even Betts is down to four nine today. Like that's Are you serious. Oh my god. Um, Bellinger, like. Merrill Kelly, the only issue that I have with him is the lack of, of walking the dot these Dodgers. They've, they've had a lot, of, obviously they've played against him a bunch of times and they basically all hit him. Well, <laughs> like it's, I mean, you know, they, they're hitting 270 off of them. They've only struck, only struck out 24 times in 160 at bats, a little below average, you know, overall uh, bets has a couple home runs and 12 at bats. Bellinger has a couple home runs and 14 at bats. Uh, Muncie is eight for 18 off of him. Will Smith is six for 11 off of him. Justin Turner, seven for 15. I'm not saying you should give, you know, th- these are all small sample size, but when you add a bunch of small sample sizes up together and they equal a, l- a large one for the best offense in baseball, it does feel like they should be far more owned than every other stack. And maybe they will be by the time it's over. But I think some of the early projections have them way, way lower. Um, partially they're a hard team to stack sometimes. Keep in mind, though, Will Smith may also not play, which would put Austin Barnes, maybe it softens your lineup a little bit. But um, Will Smith, oh, he didn't play yesterday. Damn it, I missed that. I missed that piece of news. So he will be playing today. Though. doesn't matter. It's, so, it's too easy. I mean, look, look what I just did in like two seconds. Yeah. I mean, like two seconds. I, I didn't play Trey Turner, but whatever. I played Gavin Lux. And I played five Dodgers who were all like awesome. Yep. With Scherzer and Burns. And, and I'm sure that I can make the rest of that lineup work somewhere. Yep. And I'm going to do a quick check right now. I don't know if they've announced it yet, but I'm going to, we can get the Arizona. Um, uh, Whether it's the humidor or the, the dome or the, whatever it is. It's like, yeah. Let's see if the roof is open. Cause it's, it's getting hot out there. Open or closed. You want the to be closed, right? No, you want, you want to be open. To be open um, with the heat. Uh, let's see. What? Come on. Where's my, I used to have this thing. Where did it go? Well, I'm going to have to find that one later. I'll definitely have it before five 30. Um, but that's a uh, that's weird. I don't know what happened to it. Um, yeah, uh, but but that that will make a little extra difference if if they open the roof. I don't think they're going to. I think that you know I, I don't know. They treat it like a Coors game to me. I think the Dodgers tee off here. Hey, you know you know what I don't see. I don't. I, I was open my big mouth and I said, listen, you know, you can stack these guys. You can make the rest of these lineups work. You know what I don't see on this stat on this slate. What? A lot of real cheap one offs that are that are worth playing. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I still will argue like about the, uh, you know, I'll definitely argue for the side of like guys like Bellinger, you know, I don't care if you bat seven, the guy you get to. No, I just mean if I use all five of these Dodgers. And I'm, yeah, I'm, there's I'm, not like the obvious ones yeah. we've had, the guys leading off at 2.2. Yeah. Um, the ones you could use would be the, like, I think that like McCutcheon and Renfro are reasonable enough. Uh, you've got guys yeah, like. They're in the outfield, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, so for so for the for, you don't you're not gonna yeah you're not gonna have that. But you could but again you could just throw in the catcher for Cleveland, um, Lavastida, uh, who's two point four k. He's a cheap option. You could throw in there. It's um, another Cleveland. There's another Cleveland guy. Yeah. Who? Um, uh, Bobby Bradley. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure about uh, Bradley making the lineup today, but it's possible. Okay. Um, but then you and the, and then and then the Houston's you've got you could play like you know it's it's kind of gross but if you, if you wanted to do a an eight nine one stack or an eight nine something I don't know like you got McCormick and Maldonado that's not that exciting you're you're kind of right that it is it is so it's it's a little harder than usual to to put those guys together 
against these Dodgers. Uh, sorry, play the Dodgers with the top two pitchers and uh, get away with it without you know compromising some positions. But I don't know, man. I, I still think I'd be willing to take that shot, even if maybe you'd look. You could do a one off of Brian of uh, Travis Shaw uh, if you want to. If you if you want to get a guy who hasn't had a fantasy point this season. Um, what a weird thing happened to this guy, man. A couple of years ago, this guy was like looking like he was on his way to being just a, you know, a 30 plus home run every year player. And now he just can't hit the ball, but I was sort of half joking, but he has 2,400. Um, so you do have some options. It's just not the most exciting options, especially if you want to play the Dodgers outfield because the who's a better, who's I mean, a better play bomb or, 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 or Turner probably. <laughs> that's, if that's ever a real question i think I we, need to, we need to start wondering about our, you know what i mean like that's that's what happens right. though. like there's somebody catches like a trendy thing and it's just like no guys just play the long in, in baseball play the long-term results you know what i mean if somebody's really broken or something or somebody's hot sure maybe you can change it for a given day but like alec Baum, like in a spot where he's not even guaranteed all of his at bats versus justin turner who is uh, you know, an all-star or an all-star level player in the best offense in baseball, I would always go with that guy. Are we still uh, anti, um, what's his name, uh, Guriel? I mean, on these kind of slates, it doesn't matter as much. Um, he is cheap now. Uh, I don't like the idea of him as a, like a one-off, but sort of you're losing all the, you're kind of screwing yourself with him as a one-off usually because the odds of them having power that just comes from a guy who doesn't have much power or doesn't really hit for power. Um, he's, if he's having a game, that means the guys around him are having a game. You know what? The fact of the matter is that I don't think you have to play these cheap pitchers. You definitely don't have to, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't be like if they both put up 20 something and you want to stack the Dodgers with Houston and all the expensive bats, you could do it. Um, and you could throw in Jose Ramirez as a one-off to do a, go with a little four, three stack or something, the four, three and Jose Ramirez as a one, I know they're all look like they're popular, but people aren't going to build that exact way. Well, maybe a, a few will today because you have some, some, some real name guys if, as the cheap pitching options. Um, real quick, I, I would love to just run into some FanDuel stuff because I don't think, you know, I want to, I want to make sure we're covering it, but I also having here, having trouble with my screen here, this, um, the, the really, the difference is we're, we're only considering, uh, I mean, you got Berrios and Nivaldi. I'm not playing anybody on FanDuel that's not named Bueller, Bieber, or Scherzer. And Bueller would just be a pivot off of the other two. Um, I know Errol Kelly's been good the first couple of games. I really hope people don't want to play the Dodgers. I think by the end of the day, we still will see people will come to their senses and play the Dodgers. Um, but there's a million ways on FanDuel you can stack the Dodgers to get different. And I always encourage the – you could play Will Smith with Freddie Freeman in the same lineup um, and Ant Muncy because that, then there's a position crossover. You have three guys who are first base eligible, but you've got one in Muncy that's second base eligible and you use your utility. That's one way to do it. Um, I don't expect Bellinger to be popular on FanDuel. I don't expect Lux to be popular on FanDuel. I do expect Turner, tra uh, both Turners and Mookie to be to get the ownership. I don't think Freeman is going to be as popular on FanDuel either. So I, I would just keep that in mind and, and maybe – there's plenty of ways to get different within a, within a chalky stack today on uh, yeah, for me on FanDuel. I actually have, um, I have um, Scherzer as a top guy is, is for whatever is, is Milwaukee not available on FanDuel? Milwaukee is I mean, you, yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah, they're not. Cause it's, it's the game. Oh, starts okay. I, I was wondering where, where's, where's Burns. Um, yes. Yeah. I have, I have Scherzer as, as the top on there. Um, as far as pitching goes, and on, I think he's going to be so popular, isn't he? He has to be. Which one? Who? Scherzer. Uh, he doesn't have to be. I mean, it's going to just be between he and Bieber. I don't think people think, I, I think that it's only, I, I really don't think people have, I don't know where this Bieber is getting hit and he's missing like velocity and everything. I mean, he was, he was up to 99 in his last start and he, you know, Put up 27 DraftKings points and pretty much of a monster game for FanDuel. So I, I don't know. I think that there's some maybe some podcasts or something that you've heard that I don't think are accurate. Um, to, to see him having lower velocity, I think that was very much intentional in his first starts. I think they're trying to bring him back a little bit slowly, which makes him maybe a little bit worse. But I mean, he struck out seven in, in six innings in his last start and, you know, gave up no runs. Oh, no, gave one run. Um, 
I don't see a giant gap between the Bieber Scherzer thing, but I, I do think Scherzer is the better play. I think that uh, on FanDuel, I, I see that um, looking at my stacks, I see I see Cleveland sneaking up there a little bit even higher on FanDuel. Um, so Cleveland could end up being the uh, the uh, the idea. We'll see. Yeah, I, I definitely can get behind it. I like the idea. Um, all right, everybody. And I, by the way, I I, I do. I'm, I'm going to throw out one little. I'll, I'll get my bets and stuff up. But I, I I do like Cleveland as a potential stack. But at the same time, in that game. I feel like Bieber should have more respect. So to, to have a four run total against him, I just think is kind of flawed. Um, uh, that, that, I like the under in that game as my initial thought. Anyway, um, good luck to everybody. I will have all my plays up. I will have all my early builds up. I'll have my bets of the day, including NBA. And uh, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, sounds good. Good luck, everybody. Let's kill it tonight.